The film begins with a spaceship, Avalon, rapidly traveling to the colony world of Homestead 2 on autopilot mode, carrying 5,000 passengers and 258 crew members sleeping for 120 years in hibernation pods. The spacecraft has been on its 120-year mission to the destination for 30 years. While rapidly proceeding toward its destination, the spaceship collides with a small and giant asteroid. The automated system had already activated the shield before the collision. However, the shield was not strong enough to prevent the damage. Due to the crash, a few malfunctions occurred, and the spaceship went into self-repairing mode to control the damage. As a result of those malfunctions, unfortunately, Jim's hibernation pod unexpectedly opened and awakened him. Once Jim becomes conscious, the hologram informs him that he has spent 120 years in suspended animation, and they are four months away from the colony world of Homestead 2. Meanwhile, he can enjoy a good time in the spaceship with fellow passengers and participate in various activities. The system informs him that the ID band on his wrist will grant him access to the luxuries of Avalon, and then it guides him to his cabin to take a rest. The following day, Jim gets ready to meet other fellow passengers and attend the orientation about Homestead 2. Jim became distraught because he was the only person in the lecture hall. Jim shoots the question of where the others are, but the hologram doesn't give him an appropriate answer. After becoming excessively anxious, Jim abruptly left the lecture and began searching for other passengers inside the spacecraft. He finds an information kiosk at the main concourse. However, it wasn't helpful either, and it instructed him to see the ship steward at Grand Concourse Level 3 for further detailed inquiry. When he gets there, he finds no one as well. Jim returned to the information desk and inquired about the captain and crew of the spaceship. He is sent to the bridge, where he can get in touch with the captain. Jim couldn't get into the command center since he had no authorization to open it. However, when he peeked through the window, Jim got scared because the spaceship was flying on autopilot. You gotta be kidding me. Jim then heads to the observatory and learns that Homestead 2 is 90 years away. I woke up too soon. He swiftly went back to the information kiosk and requested to send a message to Earth. The hologram warned him it would be expensive, but Jim didn't care at all. He just wanted to get back into the hibernation. Jim sent the message, but it turned out that he would get a response in 55 years. Jim realizes that he is the only one who has awakened. Therefore, he walks around heartbrokenly. Fortunately, his eyes catch another human being at the bar. Jim gets overwhelmingly excited and straight heads to him. After a chit-chat, Jim suddenly realizes that the bartender is a robot named Arthur, and all his excitement vanishes. Despite Jim's best efforts to dig out some information from him, the conversation wasn't as fruitful as usual. After the drink, Jim goes back to his cabin to sleep. The following morning, when Jim tried an alternate breakfast menu, he discovered that most of the items were only available to gold-class passengers, leaving him with his black espresso. Jim then goes to the workshop to get the hibernation pod's manual and tools. Jim proceeded to fix his hibernation pod, but tragically, the outcome was not as expected. Jim then made an attempt to access the crew pod area. Since he lacks clearance, he makes a valiant effort to enter that chamber. However, all of his attempts were futile. Since there is no one to talk to, Jim decides to see the bartender to clear his mind. As he approaches the bartender, a slight error occurs. He receives some excellent counsel from Arthur during the conversation. Take a break from worrying about what you can't control. Live a little. As a result of the bartender's excellent advice, Jim breaks into the gold-class passenger's cabin and starts enjoying the luxurious life there. However, the lonely James soon gets bored with this luxurious life and becomes an alcoholic. One day, while walking, Jim stumbles on a bottle and falls near the pod. As he gets up, he finds a gorgeous young lady named Aurora sleeping inside the hibernation pod. Her magnificent beauty enticed him enough that he couldn't take his eyes off her. Jim then starts digging into her life and gathering some information from her podcast. Jim becomes overwhelmingly obsessed with her, even discussing her with Arthur at the bar while having drinks. Jim can't stop thinking about her even though he starts having breakfast and talking, sitting near her pod. Jim made the decision to open her pod because he was sick of being alone and didn't want to pass away alone. Jim goes to inform Arthur of his intention to open Aurora's pod. Arthur, on the other hand, warns against it. Well, you can't do that. Jim already knew this would wreck her life, but he couldn't stop himself from being selfish. One day, Jim cleaned up himself nicely and eventually opened Aurora's pod. Jim quickly grabs the tools as the pod opens and runs away to hide in his chamber. After a while, Jim shows up at the Grand Concourse to meet Aurora like a stranger, pretending he knows nothing about her. Aurora inquired about the crew members and other passengers. Jim explains to her they are the only ones who awaken early due to the malfunction and are 89 years away from the destination. When Jim told her, he'd been awakened a year ago and trying to break into the command center ever since. Aurora panics and runs to locate her pod to get back into hibernation. 
Jim follows her and informs her there is no way to get back into the hibernation. Then, Jim urged her to relax in her cabin because she had just emerged from hibernation. More than a year. It must have been so hard for you. Jim did not feel proud of what he had done to Aurora, so he went to the bar to talk to Arthur to clear his head. Jim also requested Arthur not to inform Aurora that he was the reason she woke up early. I'm a gentleman. The next morning, Aurora wakes up and heads to the automated kiosk to inquire about how to fix the hibernation pod. At that moment, Jim appears and requests her to join him at breakfast. While they are heading to the eatery, a minor malfunction occurs in the spacecraft. When Aurora learns that Jim has been eating a simple breakfast for one year, she treats him with one of the gold-class breakfast menus as a kind gesture. Aurora inquired about the prospect of returning to hibernation while eating breakfast. Jim said he had tried everything over the year but had no luck. Aurora doesn't believe him and suggests he may have overlooked something, so she does her own research and finally ends up trying to break into the cruise chamber. Meanwhile, Jim noticed a few more malfunctions happening in the spacecraft. Aurora then starts jogging, swimming, writing the blogs, and keeping herself distracted. One day, Aurora goes to take his interview for her blog because he is the first hibernation failure in the history of space travel. She asked why he left the planet Earth. Back on Earth, when something breaks, you don't fix it, you replace it. Jim says he might be helpful as a mechanical engineer and build his own life at Homestead too. According to Aurora, she will conduct interviews, write magnificent stories about colonists, spend a year at Homestead too, and return to the Earth to share those beautiful stories. Following that, they begin spending time together, such as dancing, going to the movies, playing basketball, and he even introduces her to Arthur, the bartender. That's what Jim desired, to spend time with someone special rather than dying alone on the spaceship. On the other side, Aurora surrenders her wish to restore the hibernation pod, accepts reality, and begins her life on a starship. Some days later, Jim invites her to a dinner date, which she accepts. You clean up pretty good yourself. Aurora was looking stunningly beautiful, and Jim admired her beauty. They had a wonderful time at the dinner table. After supper, Jim takes to the airlock chamber for a thrilling experience. Both of them put on the spacesuit and head out to the spacewalk. Jim holds Aurora's hand, turns off the magnetic boots, floats in the space together, and they have a great time. Upon return, they passionately kiss each other and make love together. Aurora moves into Jim's chamber the following day and begins living together. They started spending more time together, playing the piano, jogging, eating breakfast and dinner, and getting drinks at the bar. Aurora also began working on her book. Aurora believes she met him by chance at the spacecraft, but the naive girl is unaware of the reality. Jim explores the ship further and discovers the gardening area. He presents her with red roses, and she gets overwhelmingly excited to see them. Are they real? I cut them myself. Jim planned her birthday celebration quite well. They cut cake and had supper. After supper, they head to a bar for drinks. Aurora informs Arthur that she is in love with Jim, and they don't have any secrets. Jim wants to make this day more special, so he heads to the washroom to take out the ring and prepare himself to propose to her. In the meantime, Arthur reveals that Jim is the reason she is here and that he purposefully awakened her. Arthur is not someone who honors commitments and ruins Jim's entire plans. Upon hearing this, Aurora gets agitated and directly confronts him. Jim has no choice except to accept the truth. Before Jim explains anything to her, Aurora gets panicked and runs to her cabin to digest this horrible fact. After a while, Jim returns to his cabin and learns that Aurora has moved into her chamber with her belongings. The next morning, Jim tried to talk to her at the breakfast table, but she left her breakfast in the middle and ran away. Aurora can't forgive him for what he has done to her, even though she is becoming increasingly stressed out every day. One night, while Jim is sleeping, Aurora enters his cabin under the influence of great stress and begins savagely beating him to avenge her anger with him. She even tries to take his life, but her moral conscience forbids it, and walks away sobbing. The next morning, Jim tries apologizing to her and informing her that he is in love with her while using the spaceship intercom since she is not talking to him anymore. Aurora yelled at him. I don't care! That evening, when Jim was sitting in his chamber, a huge malfunction occurred, and the spacecraft's diagnostic system failed. On the other hand, Aurora was preoccupied with conversing with Arthur at the bar and was oblivious that these system failures were taking place. The next morning, Aurora goes to Grand Concourse for breakfast and learns Jim has planted a tree there. While she was admiring the beauty of nature, Jim got trapped in the elevator owing to a malfunction. On the other hand, Aurora faces a vending machine problem, which suddenly starts throwing cereal at her. Meanwhile, both of them hear a human voice ranting about who planted the tree on his ship. Upon hearing this, they run to him at Grand Concourse. It turns out Deck Chief Gus has also awakened earlier due to a hibernation pod's malfunction. Aurora and Jim notify him of the current scenario. Gus responds that hibernation pods are never meant to fail, indicating something is wrong with the spacecraft. 
Anybody else awake? Just me and him. They then head to the bridge and enter the command center to investigate the source of the failure. Gus learns that the ship's automatic diagnostics have failed. As a result, they must physically verify each deck. Gus educates them on how to collect the data manually and send them to different stations to collect the data. Meanwhile, he went to check the failure in the hibernation pods. After a while, Jim joins him, and Gus accuses him of tampering with Aurora's hibernation pod. Jim acknowledges the accusations and lets him know she is aware of it as well. Aurora hands him data she collected from different stations and informs him that Jim woke her up. Gus replied it wasn't right, but the man was drowning. But the drowning man will always try and drag somebody down with him. Since Gus was not feeling well, he went to take a rest in his chamber. That night, Aurora wasn't feeling sleepy, so she went swimming. While swimming, all of a sudden, a significant gravity failure occurred, almost drowning her in the water. Fortunately, gravity restored on time, and she emerged from the water alive. Gus informs them that gravity loss indicates that whatever is wrong is beginning to affect the big ticket items. Gus instructs the system to display the timeline of all events. It turns out that something huge occurred two years ago, causing considerable damage to the spaceship. Gus further says that the problem needs to be fixed manually right away. They proceed to the main engineering to resolve the issue, but Gus faints and collapses there. They whisk him away to a medical facility. Autodoc performed the diagnostic scan. It turns out that Gus is gravely ill, and there is no cure. Various treatments are possible. None will stand the patient's life. Before passing away, Gus handed his wristband to Jim and requested both of them to fix the spacecraft before something terrible occurred. At that moment, another failure occurs, the lights turn scary red, and the spaceship trembles. They encounter gravity failure once more as they make their way to the main engineering. They see Arthur is also acting strangely. Jim pulls out Arthur's chip in a hurry, stopping it just in time before it starts to self-destruct. Once they reach the main engineering, they discover the problem inside the power plant area. The whole section's closed off, something's wrong. As they open one door manually, Aurora is almost pulled under by a hole in the deck. She tries to obstruct it with a tablet that Jim thrusts at her. Meanwhile, Jim seals the hole with a liquid sealer. After that, they learn that the vessel has multiple breaches. They eventually discovered the problem's source, a meteor-damaged reactor control computer, two years ago. They head to the workshop, find the component, and replace it swiftly, but the reactor's venting system continues to malfunction. They try to override manually, but the venting mechanism still didn't work. Jim claims that the outer door is jammed. He must go outside the spaceship and physically open it in order to cool the reactor. They head to the airlock, and Jim quickly puts on the spacesuit. Before departing, Jim hands her Gus's bracelet and looks at her as if it were the last time he would see her. Come back to me. I can't live on this ship without you. By the time Aurora returned to the reactor chamber, the temperature was at its peak. Jim manages to get to the vent tube, but discovers that he has to hold the latch open in order for the manual vent to function. Aurora doesn't like his idea, but Jim insists that's the only option they have to save their and others' life. Finally, Rora vents the reactor while Jim holds the door. Jim's tether broke during that process, but the mission was successful. Due to multiple punctures, his spacesuit pressure starts dropping, and his oxygen level plummets. As a result of his tether break, he can't return to the spaceship. He apologizes to her and says his final goodbye to her. Aurora doesn't want to lose him, so she quickly puts on the spacesuit and heads out of the spaceship to bring him back. Aurora rescues him by catching his tether and bringing him back to the spacecraft. Aurora rushes him to the medical care, and after a thorough examination, Autodoc informs her that Jim is no more. Aurora uses Gus wristband to bypass medical protocols in order to resuscitate him. Fortunately, the procedure went well, and Aurora is relieved to see him alive. After that, Aurora fixes Arthur's cuts. Meanwhile, Jim discovers a way to get her back into hibernation through Autodoc. Jim informs her about this good news, but she refuses to get into hibernation because she has forgiven him and wants to spend time with him. That evening, Jim proposes to her, and she accepts his proposal. They start living again like a couple. 88 years later, the spaceship arrives at Homestead 2. As per the protocol, the crew member awakens first and witnesses the spacecraft in a unique state. The grand concourse was full of surprises, and they could hear Aurora's voice chanting the narrative of her and Jim's excellent existence on the ship. So that was Passengers. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and turn on the notification so you won't miss the next recap. Until then, cheers.